What's going on, broskies? My name's Shivoki, and today we're back at it again with another Smite God Guide. Now, Terra is by far my new favorite guardian with no doubt whatsoever. She's awesome, so much fun, but when she first came out, I really didn't enjoy her at all. But once I got a taste of her CC chain potential, her high damage, and of course her amazing sustain, I almost fell in love with her. You know, it's, it's kind of crazy. But in today's guide, I'll be going over her passive and abilities, my typical build and start for her, situational items, what gods she is strong and weak against, and much, much more. Now, if this guide helps you in any way or at all, please let me know, show some love, and leave a thumbs up and a comment down below. And of course, subscribe if you're not a broski already. Now, first, let's take a look at her passive and abilities. Now, Terra's passive is called Standing Stones. Terra's abilities create standing stones. As long as any standing stones are on the battleground, Terra becomes knockup immune and her basic attacks slow enemies and deal bonus damage. Now, if Terra shatters any of these stones, she'll retain her this buff for an additional three seconds after all stones are gone, which is amazing. So basically, if you're playing Terra right, which is having stones up all the time, use them to stun, use them to uh, to root, or whatever it is, or just having them to heal your allies, or just having them to scare the enemies, is a really, really smart way to not get knocked up, and of course, do more damage and slow enemies with your base attack. It's a 30% slow for 1.25 seconds. Of course, it doesn't stack, but if you, as long as you keep hitting them, they're slow for 30%. And all you need is one stone up, and it's not too hard. A little bit of cooldown reduction, you have these stones up at all times. And of course, the bonus damage is pretty nice. Seven bonus damage is not too bad at all. So a very, very awesome passive. I truly love it with all of my heart. Now, Terra's first ability is called Force of Nature. But first, I'll be going over how I level these abilities after I go over all her abilities, so stay tuned for that one. Now, Force of Nature, Terra gains momentum, causing her to dash forward and deal damage to enemies she passes through. Terra may dash through her own standing stones to shatter them. If she does so, she may dash one more time within the next three seconds, which is a very important thing to keep in mind, guys. It does a lot of damage. This ability is absolutely amazing. It is a dash ability. It has a range of 35, and of course, it is pretty fucking awesome. I love it. The damage starts at 60 power, I mean 60 damage, and maxes out at 220 plus 30% of your magical power. Now you're saying, that's not that much scaling. That really isn't that strong, but okay, you can do it twice. So that's, you know, that's, that's a lot of damage. That's 60% basically. <laughs> that's a lot of damage, a lot of bursts. 220 times two is pretty hard hitting. Now, the main thing is though, it helps you get away, it helps you initialize, it helps you do a lot of things, but my favorite thing about it is throwing down the three or the or the, uh, or the the uh, the two and dashing through it and through enemies at the same time. It's kind of like a Nox dash. Dashing through enemies and the stone and then dashing back through the enemy again to do even more burst damage. Terra has a lot of damage and a lot of people think you have to level her really damaging to do this, but you don't have to. She has great scaling and overall, I think this ability is absolutely amazing. Now, if you watch my video about how I kind of predicted gods coming out, I definitely said I wanted a magical guardian type character who can use earth and the world around her to control things and crush shit and they come out with Terra, the earth mother, who has a second ability called crushing earth. Terra raises up two standing stone walls on either side of a target location, slowing enemies in between them by 20% as long as both stones stand up. Now, Terra may activate this ability once again to slam the stones together, damaging and stunning enemies in between it for 1.5 seconds. Now, these stones can be shattered into a cone of shrapnel with Force of Nature, which is her first ability, damaging enemies in the area. A very important thing to keep in mind, guys. Also, the the, uh, the, uh, the uh, smashing together mechanism actually does a lot of damage, and I will go over that. It's a really, really awesome ability, and I truly love it. It's a great, great power. Now, the damage per wall, it starts at 50 and maxes it at 190. So if both walls hit down, that's 190 times 2, plus 35% of your max power. Now, the shatter damage, of course, if you shatter through it, it's 260 burst, plus 35%. But keep in mind, guys, there's actually two walls through this. So if you smash through it, and then smash through the other one right after, not only are you doing a lot of burst damage, but you're bucking them up pretty bad. So the mana cost, guys, is a max of 80 with a range of 55, so a pretty amazing ability. My main thing I love about this is that you can basically throw down your 3, you can dash through it, throw down your 2, and then dash through this, or just smash it. So they're rooted and stunned, so it's a lot of combinations able to do this. My personal thing, guys, like, like, like I just said, is I throw down the 3, I dash the 3 to root the entire team there. Then I smash them with a rock, and then they're fucked. And I still have another dash to dash for the enemies do a lot of things. I still have an ultimate. I still have an amazing passive to slow them and hit hard with basic attacks. So overall, it's a really, really cool ability. And I level it first, which I will go over in a minute here. But I just want to let you know, it's my favorite ability on her. 
Terra's number three is called Monolith. Terra summons a standing stone monolith surging with natural energy. The monolith heals nearby ally gods every 0.5 seconds. Terra can shatter the stone with force of nature, which is her first ability, to root enemies in the area for 1.5 seconds and create a damaging area that lasts 5 seconds. Now the ability of course is a ground target ability. The monolith duration lasts for 10 seconds. Now the heal per tick guys starts at 5 per tick and max it at 25 per tick plus 5% of your magical power. Believe it or not, with 2 healing items, which I will go over soon, this ability heals for a fuck ton. Oh my god, I, I love this ability. It's so fantastic. Now when you smash it guys, it turns into the damaging aura. The damage per tick is 15 early game, but 35 max level, plus 5% of your match power as well, so it hits pretty fucking hard, it's pretty fun, it actually helps me secure kills pretty often, believe it or not. The radius is 30, so a pretty big radius, it helps, this, this ability is fantastic for pushing phoenixes, pushing towers, or really engaging in team fights. You throw this heal down and your entire team's being healed, now for whatever reason you need to throw peels away, or you need to help somebody out at all, or just root someone there, smash through it guys, and they're rooted, then stun them, it's just a fantastic combo. Terra played right is a devastating team fighter. Lastly is Terra's ultimate called Terra's Blessing. Terra channels her strength into the entire world, buffing all of her allies for 10 seconds. Now while active, Terra and her allies gain an increased movement speed, reduction of mana cost for all abilities, and increased cooldown reduction. Terra also summons four stones around herself and of course everyone on her team. Now if any of them take damage four times, the stones will activate a heal and it will heal that god. That's a, this ultimate is fucking amazing. Hands down, my favorite ultimate on any Guardian whatsoever. Now, the heal guide starts at 100, max out at 500, plus 30% of your magic power. So if they are taking four basic attacks, keep that in mind. It's not tower shots anymore. It's four basic attacks. It's amazing. If they take four basic attacks, they're healed for a shit ton. 30% magical scaling is not too bad at all. Now the CDR guy starts at 20% and max out at 40%. So it's 40% CDR for 10 seconds for your entire team. That is a huge team fight change. And of course the mana cost reduction is 100%. So when you pop this ultimate, your entire team can use their abilities all day long with zero mana whatsoever. So it's a very, very good team fight turnaround. You guys can have no mana, be absolutely fucked, can't get away. Pop the ultimate, your team can get away, your team can turn a fight around. But many, many situations can come from this. And of course, the movement speed buff is 30%. So overall, this ability is, I wouldn't say OP, but it's fucking amazing. Now, when it comes to leveling Terra's abilities, I definitely level the two first, then the one, then the three, and of course, the ultimate whenever I can. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because Terra has an insane burst potential. She has a really good ability to lock people down, do a lot of damage, and basically utilize her passive and her one. Oh, in combination with her 3 and her 2 to do an insane amount of damage. She's a really cool combo basically. So the 2 has great scaling, you can do a lot of damage onto it, so I level it first. Then I level the 1 because it just overall, 220 max level times 2 basically. Because you can do 220 damage, smash through them, smash them again for another 220 as well. And then of course the 3 later game, well by the time you get the 3 on board, you'll already have your healing items as well and your build. If you have them, if not, you'll be a later build with more power. So basically your scaling will be a lot better on the 3 overall too. So it's basically a smarter way to level this. This is my personal build, this is the one I would die by, it's the one I agree with 100%, so please guys pause it here and try it out. I really only play Terror and Conquest. Yes, I know this entire guide has gameplays from Arena, Clash, uh, Joust, and Conquest, but overall I play her a lot in Conquest as a support. So my main recommendation is this starter right here, Watcher's Gift, level one boots, four healing pots, and four mana pots. Of course, if you, if you want to do the old uh, ward by their side, you can basically buy a ward instead, and then come back and buy your pots after. But personally, this is how I start almost every single game with her. Even in Joust, even in Arena, I definitely recommend this starter. Now, when I play Terra, I only play her in two different ways. I either play her really supporty, a nice cooldown, basically, a really nice heals, or I play her damagey. Now, when I play her in Conquest and, and support lane, this is my typical build. I can even do it in Joust, even Arena, whatever it is, I just love this build. Cool down boots, mystical mail, some penetration, lotus crown, rod of Aslepolis, or how the fuck you say it, and rod of Tahuti. A very awesome build, good cooldown early up. Mystical mail is just so good on her with the three the, the three tick damage and this tick damage. You can be really close, you can stun them, you can be really up in their face, doing the slows, doing some extra damage onto them. I love Voice Stone right here, guys, and the main reason is because they're always a mage on the group with me, and when I have a mage with me, it basically allows them to hit even harder, especially if they're building. Um, you know, protections. Of course, if they're, if they're not building protection on the other team and, and there's no need for this item, of course I won't go for it. But this is usually what I have to go because most people are going to build a little bit of magical protection against a Terra and a Nox or whatever the situation is. So, and of course, a healing item 
works so well. She has a really strong ability to heal, and by the time I have these items, I already have my level 3, almost really high level, and then Rod the Hootie to, you know, to basically to round it all off. Very awesome build. I love it. Please try it out. Now, this is my typical damage build. I go pen boots, I go warlock stash, mystical mill. If I don't go this pen item with a little bit of defense, I might just go obsidian shard or even something stronger, but I like Rod to Hootie and Soul Reaver. This is a very strong, high burst build. It allows her to really do a lot of damage. You pop the three down, go through the three, root them, do the two damage, and then just smash the two twice. I'm telling you, they're fucking dead. Really, really hard damage. I didn't do it at all on this guy because personally, that's not how I enjoy playing her. I enjoy playing her more of a support role. But this is a very viable build if you want to play in Joust or Arena, maybe even Siege, a very, very fun thing. You can try it in Conquest if you're ballsy, you have a really good team to do it with, but personally, I definitely recommend going support role most definitely. And these, of course, are my situational items that you see a couple on here I already use. Now, they're not really situational. Personally, I feel like she has a kind of awkward time building a lot of things. But I really love, of course, the very strong defense cloak. That second item is one of my favorite items. Uh, Pestilence is a really, really good item because it gives her magic protection if she needs it and also gives her the ability to stop healing so she can basically be the only healer there. Winged Blade or any of a sort is a great, great item to stop the attack speed or slows on her, whatever it is. And of course, Lotus Crown is a fantastic one. Any Therial Staff, basically if you build a really high health Terra, this item will help her a lot, doing a lot of damage. So personally, these are my situational items that I use most definitely or most often. So please check them out. They're not the only ones, but these are the ones I recommend in my top five. Now lastly, my broskies for Shoski. You all know I usually have five gods she's bad against and five gods she's good against, but truly this one time, it's kind of broad. It's definitely a broad statement. It's kind of hard to really say what god she's good against, got a bad, bad against. I do have a few gods to name, but other than that, here it is, guys. So, God, she's bad against. I definitely believe anyone that has a lot of getaways is gonna fuck her. Anyone with an immunity, she's screwed. Shanga, she can't get a hold of Arachne, Apollo, Thanatos, even Anubis in some cases because of his ability to go to ultimate and do a high amount of damage. Now, that's just my opinion. Definitely Shanga, most definitely. Even Chiron or Chrono, someone who just can be really annoying. But God, she's really strong against any god who can't get away. A Muzan Cobb, a Quash. Anubis in some cases, like I said, kind of broad. You have um, Chiron sometimes, if, if, it's, if it runs down. If any hunter has their one getaway down, they're absolutely fucked. Uh, Kukla Khan, Zeus, things like that. So Ra has a hard time as well. Any god that can't get away is usually fucked. Terra has a high amount of burst, and she also brings a sense of comfort to her. When, you're, when she's fighting someone and she's holding them down, she has the ability to have a really high heal, a great ultimate, and the ability to root them and stun them and hold them in place and slow them down. So she brings in some comfort to a team fight where you definitely feel like, okay, I can go into this team fight. I can do the best I can do because I also have that Terra ultimate ready to save me. I have that Terra stun. I have that Terra heal. So it, it brings a sense of comfort to a team fight, which I love, and that's why I truly enjoy her as a guardian. But all right, guys, that's it for the God Guy. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. If it helped you at all, please let me know in the comment section down below. And as well, I want to hear your typical Terra builds, guys. I love hearing the builds down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. And as well, I want to hear what god needs a guide next. I know there's a bunch that need a guide. I'm trying to do it the best I can. Once a week is definitely very fun for me, and I'm probably going to do a hunter next, hopefully. But guys, let me know in the comments down below. I love your faces. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And as always, my friends, do some motherfuckers. Do some. Zah!